because sometimes I use uh, two devices. So, I'm not sure. Okay. Good. <clears throat> Okay, are we recording? Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, I'm in a shaitan or regimes, me like Rahman or Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Sallallahu was salam ala rasulillah wa ala adihi wa sahbihi wa manwala, lahmala il malana, illama alamtana in the cantal animal hakim. Lahma in an auzu becoming an napula zura, on a shapujura, on a kuna becoming al magrurin. Lahma salli was salim. وبارك على عبدك ونبيك محمد وآله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته واقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين. All praises are due to Allah. We have indeed no God but Him. He is the only one worthy of worship. We bear witness that there is no God but Allah and we bear witness that His most beloved Prophet Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام is his last and final messenger. May Allah join us with him in Jannatul Firdaus without any questioning and without any torture, without any pain. Amin, Ya Rab. Amin. May Allah be with our sisters and brothers in Palestine. <clears throat> May Allah help us to help them. May Allah keep us aware of their suffering feeling their pain, making dua for them, boycotting all the companies that support the Israeli regime, the Zionists, the best we can, Amin Ya Rab. And may Allah make me anew among those who do jihad with their money, with their time, with their knowledge, with whatever we can until the oppression is over and until Jerusalem is free and back to the hands of Muslims. Amin Ya Rab. Amin Ya Rab. Please don't forget your sisters and brothers, no matter what. Keep talking about the issue. Keep sharing news, information. Keep uh, writing to your politicians to do something. Alhamdulillah, Malaysia did something very good, uh, which is to bring some of the injured, but with one condition, to send them back. Send them back, not because we don't want them, because we don't want the Yahudis to fulfill their dream, which is to empty Gaza from its population. So it's like temporary, temporary uh, uh, condition, temporary status for those people to get well and then go back very strong, just like the Prophet ﷺ did with Hijrah, temporary Hijrah, not forever. And that's exactly what the enemies of Islam want. Take Palestinians, spread them worldwide. So it's it's the Palestinians who become Banu Israel. Banu Israel, Allah cursed them and said they will be all over the world. So it is them who should be all over the world, not the Palestinians. Okay. I wanted to say this little muqaddima before we continue our subject of love in Islam. <clears throat> so we said Islam is all about love. If anyone asks you, what is Islam? Say true love. And they be shocked. They be shocked to hear this. Then you show them based on what we are learning from this book. That why does Allah create you in the first place? From non-existence to existence. It's just because he loves you. That's one. Number two, why does Allah send you Islam? Why he sent you Islam is what? Guidance. Why does Allah send you Islam? Islam means prophets books, ulama, masajid, undang-undang, law, sharia. Why, why, why Allah gives you all these beautiful things that organize your life? 
because he loves you. He doesn't want you to go astray because there is one bad guy who is always after you. His name is Shaitan. Most of you didn't remember him this morning. While you were asleep, he was plotting against you. While you woke up, while waiting for this class, now as you are in this class, he's plotting, trying to uh, disturb you through your children, through your in-laws, through your friends who are calling you now. I don't know what. Through your afternoon program, you are already like, when is Sheikh finishing the class so that I go? ESP, yeah? be careful, Sheikh has ESP. Ah. <clears throat> if that was not love, what is love? What is love if it is not that with all the sins you commit, Allah still loves you and gives you respite. He gives you, he doesn't disturb you. And if you repent, he loves you even more. Huh. If you repent, Allah loves you even more. So Islam is all about love. Who is the true Muslim? The one who doesn't harm people with his tongue and his hands. The hadith of last night. The hadith we saw last night. What is that? That is love. I don't want to harm you with my tongue. I don't want to harm you with my hand. And, and, so really you can prove to people that Islam is all about love. You cannot be a Muslim by not loving for your brother and sister in Islam, even when you don't know them. Every Muslim out there is your brother and sister. What you love for yourself? You can't be a Muslim. If you don't love for others, what you love for yourself? If you love prosperity, good food, good house, good car, you should love the same for people. You should not feel bad when other people have something like you or better than you. Okay, so we reached hadith number nine. Allah loves noble manners. And you know Islam is all about good manners. So let's start from page 96. It's okay, I know we, we stopped at 98, but it has been ages since last class. So we go back to page 96 from the beginning. Let me, mashallah, see these nine great brothers and sisters who are attending the class and don't give up. Okay, we start with my dear brother, Dato Zakri. Go ahead, Brother Zakri. You are the first reader for us. I read the hadith. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ahabbu nasi ila Allahi ahsanuhum huluqa. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the most beloved of people to Allah are the ones with best character. Commentary. Allah has the best qualities and he loves those with the best qualities. Allah loves the best for humanity and good character. And good character is the vehicle. And well-being. This is why... Oh, we ca I can't hear you. I don't know if it's yeah. my computer. Yeah. Good Yeah. 
Um, and I also cannot hear. Uh, oh, okay, hold on. Hold on. Let me. Well -being. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. This is why the good hold man. On. At, uh, um, hold, hold on. Hold on, Zachary. What is it? Hold on. So, what should I say? Uh, turn off. Turn off my. Hold on. Let me. Turn off my, my video. Turn off my video for, for a second. Don't open it. Uh, Zachary, turn off my computer, my, my camera, because you are, uh, uh, turn it off. Uh, stay like that until I tell you. What's that thing? It's... Sure, can you hear me, Sher? Uh, I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, May yeah, I, see, I, can, I can hear you. Hold on. Yes. W what is it? Sister Farina wants to check if... Uh, if... If if there is something on our computer, hold on, please. Assalamualaikum, Sheikh. I think it's on our side and not uh, on your side because... Um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, because even other, the other Jama'ah can hear us. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Our... Okay. All right. Shall we proceed now? Yeah. yeah Go ahead. Okay, okay Sheikh. Uh, uh, Sheikh, I started back uh, the commentary, Sheikh. Yes, yes. Allah has the best qualities and He loves those with the best qualities. Allah loves the best for humanity. And good character is the vehicle for spreading happiness and well-being. This is why the good men are beloved to Allah. The excellence of good character. We, as an ummah, are going through a deficit of manners. We have strayed in many ways from Allah, and our character reflects it. It would not be possible for us to behave so poorly if we knew Allah well, love Him, and channel this love into practice. What is ironic and deeply sad is that Islam places a high premium on good character. The Prophet wasallam said, I was not sent but to complete honorable manners. Mm. We know that the Prophet wasallam reformed people's belief and practices with aqidah and law. So his message carried more than the call for a noble character. So... What does this hadith mean? We have two possibilities. The first is that it is a hyperbole. There is such emphasis on developing good character in Islam that the Prophet ﷺ made it as only task. This is a common rhetorical device in the Arabic language and it was used in other hadith. The second possibility is that good character is much more than social behavior. It encompasses our relationship with Allah, the beliefs we hold, and how these beliefs influence the rest of our life. Aqidah and law are part of this transformative, transformative message since they elevate and guide human understanding and practice. Therefore, good character is an umbrella term for all good behavior including worship and social conduct. In that sense, everything in Islam, including aqidah and law, 
is about good character. All this reflects the link between the worship of Allah and social relations. In the minds of many, unfortunately, the two are disconnected. We do not see how worshipping Allah, example, salah, fasting and zakah, affects our mundane behaviour. And so they operate separately. This is why we hear complaints about the religious being deficient in manners, in manners, example, rude, harsh, argumentative and unpunctual. On the other hand, it is unfamiliar to generalize and give the impression that everyone who is religious is flawed in character. The Ummah is indeed running a character deficit and the religious are a, pro a, a product of their society carrying the same ills as everyone else. It is also true that religious because that the religious because of their appearance represent Islam and are scrutinized more. Thus, they must strive to enhance their character, especially since worship is supposed to lead to greater kindness and mercy. When we hear that excellence in character was central to the mission of Prophet wasallam, we understand that we are not truly following him until our manners improve. And this is not a trivial matter. Prophet wasallam said, English, English. Of the most beloved and nearest in position to me on the day of judgment are those with the best character. And of the most hated to me and furthest from me on the day of judgment are the babblers, the blowhards, and the mutafahi mutafahi kun. Al mutafahi hikun. Mutafahi kun. Yes. Hikun. They said, we know the babblers and the blowhards. But who are the mutafayikun? He answered, the arrogant. Very good. Let's beautifully explain this part of the hadith, mashallah, of this chapter. Uh, Alhamdulillah, the, 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 I really like the methodology of this author. May Allah reward him. One hadith, one chapter. One hadith, one chapter about the, the same subject, which is love, love in Islam. Ahabu, the most beloved people to Allah Azza wa Jal, may Allah make me and you amongst them, say Amin, are those who have the best manners. So we need to improve our manners. If we are impatient, may Allah make us patient. So we work on that character. If we are stingy, let's become generous. If we are lazy, let's become hardworking. If we are, uh, you know, tough, let's become soft and kind. Things like that. But just not, it's not just with people. You see, that's the mistake we do. We think good character and good manners is only with people. Number one, good characters with Allah. We need to have adab, manners with God. I give you an example. Can you reveal all your body in front of people, even if you are crazy? Why are you so mindful of that in front of people, but not when you are alone? When you are alone, who is with you? Allah. Allah, so why are you revealing all your body like? <clears throat> so there should be also adab with Allah. When you speak, nobody, you speak softly, nicely, even when you are alone. So when you read the Quran of Allah, read it. Facing the Qibla, sitting properly, carrying the Mus'haf in your hands or on a small table. So adab with Allah. Smelling good. Better, better, afdal, having wudu. 
better wearing your teleco, but it's not wajib. But it's just afdal. So when you pray, why are you looking right and left? Adab with Allah is to fix your vision on the sujood place. And to be focused and to try to have khushur. You are with Allah yet you are counting your money in the bank. So you are in the bank. You are not with Allah. You are praying and you are thinking about your work. So the first adab is adab with Allah. Then comes adab with Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we hear his name, we cannot just we say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We love him, but Alhamdulillah, like he is mentioned. Yes, he is mentioned. Uh, adab with Rasulullah Sallallahu to study this, the seerah of the Prophet Wasallam, to study his hadith. Every day, one hadith at least. Allahu Akbar. Uh, Adab with parents, Adab with spouses, Adab with children, with neighbors. Then Adab with Muslims. Last, Adab with non Muslims. We have so much Adab with non Muslims. When it comes to Muslims, many of us lose it quickly. So there is something wrong with us. The other thing that the author mentioned here, which I really like, is how did Rasulullah manage to produce the best men and women after him? Teaching them aqidah and law, combined with manners. Look at me. Aqidah, teach them the true faith, because that's the foundation. Then the law, undang, undang, halal, haram. But when he did teach them the aqidah and the law, he was always strengthening those teachings with manners. So he was always telling them. For example, there is no point you pray so much, yet you are so vulgar in your language. <clears throat> You are so nasty with your spouse. You pray Qiyamul Layl and Tahajjud and fast Mondays and Thursdays, yet you are like fire with your father or mother or wife or husband. Or... So he was always teaching them to be generous, to be giving, to be forgiving, to be patient, to be grateful, to be, to be kind, tender, merciful, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one thing we do, sisters and brothers, we all do this, unfortunately. We think whoever is religious, he or she, is by necessity on good manners. That is a mistake. When you see someone religious, he or she, don't think they have the best ethics. And when you see someone very ethical, don't think he is religious. Why? Look at me. I can see a Christian, a Jew, a Hindu, very ethical. When it comes to ethics, how he deals with people. But na'udhu billah, he is mushrik. He says Allah has a son. He says Buddha is his God. So that, that being ethical does not make the person necessarily Right. And being religious 
does not make that person necessarily right. Until both, both are in him. Look at me. True Aqidah, he's a good Muslim, practicing. At the same time, he has good ethics. Why? Because we are the product of our societies. Look at the Japanese people. They are quite ethical. But, na'udhu billah, I don't know what they worship. And you see some Muslims, Allahu Akbar. When you see them praying, you say, I am already in Jannah. Wait a minute. They start fighting. They start raising their voices in the masjid. So, what makes that? It's society. This is why Rasulullah had to take the Sahaba to Medina. Migrate. Because in Mecca, he cannot practice that. So in Medina, he could. So society plays a role. Put yourself with good ethical people, you become one of them. You already have the ibadah, mashallah. You worship Allah, you pray, you fast, you wear hijab, sister. You need just to put yourself with good people. Then you become one of them. Or you are quite ethical, mashallah. You need to join Islam and do shahada and mix with people who practice the religion. So society has an impact on us. Okay? Sometimes you travel in the Muslim world, you find some people very like tough, like Afghan, Afghan Algerians, very tough. Tough doesn't mean bad, it's just they went through war. Society made them like that. They are just, you think they are like, wow, what is this? Malays, mashallah, takbir, or amlayu, my favorite people. They give you their place. They give you the place. In Mecca and Medina, look for Oram Layu and Oram Indonesia. You find the place. Society plays a role. Also, you don't have harsh weather. Do you know that? Malaysia doesn't have harsh weather. Do you have uh, minus 10, minus 20 degrees? Do you have the heat where you cannot even breathe? That also makes a person. Al insanu ibn bi atihi ibn Khaldun said. May Allah have mercy on him. The human being is the son or the daughter of his or her environment. Yeah? So keep that in mind. Keep that. In mind as you uh, progress in inshallah loving Allah and loving his creation. Continue, Brother Zakri. Ah, the hadith. Sorry. Uh, three types of people Allah hates the most, and the Prophet doesn't like them at all. The Tharun, those who speak too much, Wal Mutashaddiqun. The blowhards, you know, uh, they 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 bring all kind of flappy, flappy, fluffy words when they speak. Speak normal, brother. Why are you bringing words that uh, don't even exist in the dictionary? And al mutafayhiqun. Mutafayhiqun is coming from fiqh. Those who pretend they are faqih. They are pretending to be faqih. Actually, it's a form of arrogance. No matter what you teach them, they think you are, uh, you are below them. Because they think they know. Big problem. Okay? Yalla, continue please. The Prophet ﷺ was of great character 
and it is natural for him to love those with similar beautiful traits. Acquiring and striving for good character is an act of worship in itself, and it will bring one closest to Prophet to the Prophet وسلم, on the last day. So if we if we genuinely love him and want him to love us back, and if we want to be near with near him and enjoy his company, the path passes through moral excellence. What is frightening about bad character is that it earns one the dislike of Allah and the Prophet. The three traits in the hadith are all about excessive, artificial, and arrogant speech. Pride, showing off, and putting others down are the motives. When one speaks and they pretend to know, twist their tongue to seem more eloquent and exaggerate to elevate themselves, they are committing a sin that Allah and His Prophet detest. If they had paid attention to their worship of Allah, He would have taught them humility, sincerity, and sensitivity not to hurt others. Worshipping Allah heals us and grants us calmer hearts, and this in turn leads to greater generosity. Competition for this world is the main cause of our quarrels. But if our worship lessens our attachment to this world, we will grow to be more courteous and forgiving. Bad character is a sign of internal conflict, deficiency and corruption. This is why it distances one from Allah and His Messenger. Good character, on the other hand, brings the love of Allah and people. It is in our nature to love those with beautiful character. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said when one's words are kind loving them becomes a necessity it is impossible not to love a kind person the noble of character bring comfort and joy wherever they go they assist others suppress evil and bring hope to desperate hearts for all the good they bring to the people and the love they spread allah elevates them in jannah the Prophet wasallam. There is nothing heavier in the scale than good character. Due to it, the one with good character reaches the level of the one with frequent praying and fasting. It is an act of worship that leaves one all the way to the highest levels in Jannah. In fact, it is one of the main reasons people enter heaven and hell. The Prophet wasallam said, the Prophet wasallam, was asked about the thing that most admits people to Jannah, to which he replied, the taqwa of Allah and good character. And he was asked about the thing that, mo that most admits people to hell, to which he replied, the mouth and the private part. Very good. Very good. Wait. Another reason why we should really work on our manners. Allah loves you, people love you. Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said, Man lanat kalimatuhu, wajabat mahabbatuhu. Whoever words are kind, it becomes incumbent to love him or her. Which is true. When you have a sweet tongue, when you know how to speak, you are kind, Good morning, salamu alaikum, how are you? You look good, mashallah, alhamdulillah. When these words are your nature, people will love you. When just your words are good, let alone when your ethics and behavior and actions, that's second reason why we also have to improve our manners. Three, it's one of the reasons to enter Jannah. Not only enter Jannah, to, to continue ascending in Jannah. This is why we need to also improve our akhlaq. And without good akhlaq, forget paradise. So one of the reasons to enter paradise is good character. Actually, sisters and brothers, it's not just enter paradise because the Prophet ﷺ in an early hadith, if you remember, he said, the nearest amongst you sitting near me 
are those who have the best character. So it's not just entering paradise. V, 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 I, P. Treatment. You'll be sitting near Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Meaning you'll be his companion in Jannah as well. MashaAllah. Okay? So remember that. Remember that it's not just for me to look good in society. It's to meet Allah on a high level, inshallah. Okay? That is a big motivation to all of us, inshallah, to improve our akhlaq. Continue, please. If, if one relates to Allah with taqwa and to the people with nobility, they will be among the people of Jannah. But if they fail to restrain their mouth and private part, the basis of indecent and obnoxious behavior, they will enter hell. This is why it is crucial to strive to attain the best manners and to ask Allah for it. Um al-Darda al said, Abu al-Darda radiallahu anha and anhu spent the night praying and crying and saying, Oh Allah, you make my physical form beautiful. So make my character beautiful until the morning. I said, Oh Abu al-Darda, your entire dua since the night was about good character. He said, Oh Um al-Darda, a Muslim's character would be good until the beauty of their character admits them to Jannah. And their character would be bad until the ugliness of their character admits them to hell. Can you, can you believe that Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, the whole night's dua in his sujood was, Allahumma hassin khuluqi kama hassan ta khalqi. The dua that actually we should say when? When do we say this dua? Who knows? In front of the mirror. Excellent. If we look at the mirror, whenever you look at the mirror, even the mirror of your car, you should say this dua. Oh Allah, improve my character the way you improved my creation. She said, the whole night I heard you saying this dua. She was like amazed. The whole night, just, oh Allah, improve my character the way you improved my look. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. The whole night, he smiled and he told her, Oh, Ummu Darda, a Muslim's character would be good until the beauty of their character admits them to Jannah. So I was indirectly asking Allah Jannah. And their character would be bad until the ugliness of their character admits them to hell. You see why we should avoid bad, bad character? Because... The more evil behavior we show, especially mouth and private part, private part, sisters, uh, brothers, doesn't mean only zina. It means you reveal your clothes. You, 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 you don't uh, cover yourself because private part for a woman is what? Figure, the shape of the yeah. body. Everything other than face and hands. Yeah. Ah. The aura is not just your private part. Sisters, the private part, the way we think. No, it's not that. And man also, from his belly button up to his knees. So private part, they say, some people think only zina. No, 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 no. And mouth, look at me, mouth. Mouth also could be singing, a woman singing and falling on the floor. Sayachin tamu wearing hijab, and she becomes a diva. And people, uh, people do, uh, do what? Clap their hands for her. Oh. What is this? And she is, ah, ah. What is, ah, ah. Continue like that. And you see how many ah, ah's you will say in hellfire. The ulama are not doing their job. The ustas are quiet on these things. <laughs> what is this? and pondan dancing around them. What is that? And boys and girls dancing, and they, it's, it's our culture. Why the ummah is being slaughtered? 
everywhere. People are just dancing. Life is going very well. Hey, and some of you go there, huh? go and watch and sit there. You are guilty also. Because you are supporting that type of ill manners, ill manner, the least to say. Bad manners, you are supporting them by going. You should not go there. Yeah, you are healing me right. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Continue, continue. When our manners change, our whole life will change. We will be more serene. We will have greater love for people and feel more of their love. And our hearts will feel closer to Allah. And we would be helping to rehabilitate the entire ummah. Alhamdulillah. Can you, can you help someone to have good character when you yourself have bad character? You cannot. You cannot give something you don't have. So rehabilitate yourself, fix yourself so that you can help others. Very simple. Continue, Brother Zakri, continue. Why does Allah love good character? Allah loves the happiness and well-being of his creation. And good character is the vehicle that spreads them. People, of course, help each other because they need each other. This need fuels the exchange of goods and services. But good manners move us to do more and to do it well. It moves us to give more than what we receive, to give even when we do not receive. It prompts us to fight selfishness, greed, and pride, and to strive to make others happy. When people receive the best, they will give back the best. The benevolence in time will uplift all of society, spreading love and commandery. And Allah loves this. Good character is also a reflection of a life spent striving for Allah's sake. We all have to struggle to attain maintain and cultivate good traits. We do this despite the resistance of a weak and greedy self against the temptations of this world and whispers of shaitan, and despite the harsh and disappointing daily interactions. Yet, the one who stays steadfast, they do so because of Allah, even if they are alone. Nobility is not about who else is doing it. Many times, it requires resisting the pressure of the majority in society and never compromising, compromising your integrity. Good character is about pleasing Allah every single day. And Allah loves those who strive to come closer to Him. Finally, when good character is pursued for Allah's sake, it reflects an appreciation of Allah's name and attributes. Allah is generous, forgiving, merciful, concealer of mistakes and kind and he loves to see these qualities among his creation this is why he commands them and rewards them when we know this Allah's qualities will inspire us to adopt them on earth and come closer to Allah through them if we want to get closer to the merciful and to receive his mercy we should be merciful if we wish to get closer to the forgiving and receive his forgiveness, we should be forgiving. If we want to get closer to, ge to the generous, the kind, and the provider, and to receive his blessings, we should adopt these qualities and help everyone. When we do, we should remember that Allah does not want any benefit, any benefit back from his creation for the good that he gave them. Similarly, we should give without expectation of a human reward. Our reward come only from Allah. These are the manners that propel to the highest levels of Jannah and with and win us the love of Allah. Ah, very good. See, I'm not going to explain this more because it's very, very clear. But one thing needs to be said here. Why does Allah love good character? Because the more Okay, here. 
I need to buy something from brother Zachary. Zachary, I want to buy something from you. What should I bring to get that thing? What? Money. Money. Very good. Sheikh, I send this cell phone to you. 1,000 ringgit. Oh, good deal. Thank you. This. Okay. Here is 1,000. What do you do? I give you the money. What do you do now? You give me the good. Yeah. Okay. This, this transaction, this dealing between you and me, is it ethical? Yes. No. no. Here, it's not ethical. Oh. Why? Because huh? you have to pay. I paid. I paid. You give me the good. Okay. But look at me. Thank you very, very much, brother. With this price, I don't think I will find this phone elsewhere. Is it ethical now? It is. Yes. Because I said thank you. Yeah. And he would say, don't worry, Sheikh. If you need anything, I'm always here. You see, the fact that I gave him money, he gave me the good, that's not ethical. That's maslaha. Benefit. He took his benefit. I took my benefit. But is it wrong? Did I die when I said thank you very much? And he said, thank you. Please come again. May Allah bless you. Or you know what, Sheikh? Let me drop another 20%. Mm -hmm. See, it's, it's, it's what you do extra. Mm -hmm. That is ethical. Did you get it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sure. See, uh, thank you very much. May Allah bless you. You, you were really uh, of great help. Uh, come again. So ethical doesn't has, has nothing to do with. Money. Excellent. I do it. I do it for Allah's sake. Mm -hmm. It's not like because some people will say, "Why are you too polite? Why are you too nice?" Because ethics, you, 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 you. <laughs> yeah, Chef. Somebody owed me money, Chef. Many years, a lot. But I'm just I smile as every time I see him. Don't <laughs> smile <laughs> next time. Next time, bite him. Send him payback. <laughs> Ten years, yeah. Ten years. Ten years, Allah Akbar, bite him from the neck. That's what of Sheikh Zubair. Listen, listen, sisters and brothers. Being ethical, being nice, doesn't mean you let people also abuse you. But, brother, yani, you, you, you have to talk to him. Say, brother, ten years. We are all the same, brother. Okay? And we sometimes pretend we don't even see them. But... A good reminder from time to time is a good thing because they will do it to others. Just a reminder, no need to fight. Just say, Salam alaikum, brother. When are you going to give me? It's 10 years. Yeah, he, he did tell me, Sheikh. And uh, he said, uh, once he clear, he will pay me. And he said, I will I will ask Allah uh, for a long life so that I can pay all the debts. No, no. Tell him, uh, tell him don't, don't work like that. I ask Allah for a long life. Why don't you pay, Yahi, and ask Allah for a super long life? They are, you know, these people are like that. At least start paying. Okay, let's say you owe him, he owes you 10,000. 10, 10, Example, pay 1,000 at least. So I know that you are coming. Let's progress. Yes. Mm. This is how uh, they make other people not 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 borrow money anymore to anyone. Lend, lend money to anyone. See? Probably he should re recite the du'a that to, you know, to Often make it easy, no, to make it easy for him, to give him ease, to pay back his debts. Yeah. If you ask his your friend to do that. <laughs> Just tell him, when you see him, scare him. Tell him, I will not forgive you, Amal Qiyam. Uh-oh. Zachary um, has no. Zachary has a soft heart. He will not see to that. He, to, he will not tell that to his friend. No, you tell him, brother. I may not forgive you because I'm scared. I don't know. I be on the day of judgment. Allah, when He judges me, I may need every pahala. So I may not forgive you. I will get all your pahala from you. Pay me, please. 
pay me back. Simple as this. Yeah, no, one of the things I really don't like most in, in life is people taking advantage of others, borrow money, not return, just because the brother is a is little bit well off. Even if he is Elon Musk, return the money to people. Return the money to people. At least do something. Go to that per person and tell him, please, brother, forgive me. I know I'm very late. I'm not running away. I will work with you. Anyways, I don't want to talk about the fiqh issue now. We are in a spiritual uh, subject, so we remain on the spiritual uh, side. But this is, unfortunately, uh, a lot of people come to me with for counseling about this subject. And I find it amazing how many people are like hasading you, actually, when they don't return the money and they can, when they can, huh? is a form of like, oh, you're rich, you know, why should I return the money to you? Okay. Uh, so let's improve our character as much as we can so that we help others. Thank you, Brother Zakri. Let's call another brother or sister to read. How about Sister Nazaria, that is Singapore. Nazaria, are you there? Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here. Yeah, can, can, adopting good character. All right. <clears throat> adopting good character. Hang on, this is that in front of you, if, if, yes. if. Okay, naturally, ah. we would want to adorn ourselves with the best qualities to receive Allah's love. Along this path, we will come to know what we what we possess and what we lack. Some of the some of these qualities will be already in us in it, and some will need to be acquired. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Ashaj Abd Al Aus, um, Abdul Qais, Abdul Qais, Qais, Abdul Qais, you have two qualities and that Allah loves. Ashaj Abd Al Abdul Qais asked, "What are they?" The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, "Deliberation and higher, higher." I asked, "Did I have them for a long time, or are they new?" He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "You had them for a long time." I said, praise and thanks be to Allah who created me with two qualities that he loves. Very good. Let me explain this hadith before we go into detail so that everybody knows what does it mean. Now, sisters and brothers, some of the characters of Islam, manners, we were born with and some we acquire. So there are ethics, Sorry, you are not born with. You have to learn them. You have to acquire them. You have to strive to get them. But there are those, Allah made them easy. Ashaj ibn Abdul Qais, uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu looked at him and he said, Ashaj, you have two characters that Allah loves so much. He said, is, is that so, O Messenger of Allah? He said, yes. He, he said, were they in me for a long time? Or just lately when I became Muslim, that I, I acquired them through your teachings, O Messenger of Allah? He said, no, 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 no. They were with you for a long time. What are they? Look at it. Al-Hilmu wal haya. You know what is Hilm? Deliberation, when you are so easy, easy, easy. You are not a quarrelsome person. And haya, you are very shy. You let go. You are not, a, you, you know, th there are people like that. Most Malays have this, mashallah. Most Malays, they have hilm and haya. They like, 
let go. And hill, hill, they are not like rough and tough. Some Malays, you look at me. You, when I say Malays, I mean Southeast Asia, including Indonesia, Singapore, Southern Thailand, half of Philippines, mashallah. Look, in Makkan Medina, Dov. he says sorry. Actually, it's me who, sh who should say sorry, brother. Uh, my mistake. That is very good ethic. Hilm and Haya. Shai, Malu. Malu, I don't know. The Malays of Kuala Lumpur, I don't know. The Malays of other maybe areas still have this. Because society will impact you. You live in a society where there is no Haya, you become no Haya. The Arabs are very shy people. The Arabs, not the ones you are seeing on the uh, building the high, uh, highest tower in the, the world. I'm talking about the Arabs, the Arabs of the Arabs, of the kampongs. Very shy people. Very, very, very shy. Halim, you have the word Halim? Sister Halima, brother Halim? Yes. So Hilm is coming from there. And by the way, whatever your name is, you have a character of it. If you are Halima, definitely you have some Hilm. If you are Karima, definitely you are generous. Clear? So choose the good names for your children. Yeah. Continue, Sister Nazaria. Okay. Each of us has a combination of good innate manners and others that we have adopted. Some are generous by nature, while others have to work on it. Some are patient, while others have anger problems. But even our innate good qualities need to be preserved or else they will be disappear. And no matter what we already have, there is still one that we need to do. We are all on this lifelong path of pursuit and growth. On this path, we should take note of what Allah blessed us with and what we need to work on. We should preserve the gifts of Allah by thanking Him for our good qualities, attributing them to His grace and not our virtue. We should further protect them by putting them into practice. As for what we lack, we begin by asking Allah for it we need to read more about it and we should try to adopt new habits gradually. We must not also forget the influence of good company in elevating character. Finally, let us remember that our goal is the pleasure of Allah, not human gratitude or recognition. With dua and patience, we will change for the better, inshallah. Very good. So, if you look, uh, uh, you... you you are not patient at all. You are an angry bird. What should you ask Allah? You... Me, uh, patience. Yeah. yeah, Allah, grant me patience. Because you don't have it. But if you have some patience, what do you ask Allah? Increase me in patience. Improve me. How? Through dua. Through learning about it. Through practicing. Once Allah starts giving you, now you start practice. You are not generous at all. What should you ask? Ya Allah, save me from stinginess. Make me generous. If you are generous, Ya Allah, increase me in generosity. Make me more generous. You got it? So, you have to ask Allah for good characters. And then you have to ask Allah, if you already have some good characters, to improve them in you. And then to practice, Ya Rab, make me practice these characteristics and characters and manners that I already have, either by birth. Some of us are born patient. Some of us, no, they learn to be patient. Some of us are just born generous. Some children look at them, they give their toys, they give their food. 
Some, no, this is mine. Some, it's not just mine. They, they leave theirs and they come eat your food. Huh? You are shy. Ya Allah, make me more shy. You are forbearing, forgiving. Ya Allah, make me more forgive because you love forgiveness. Okay? Now, beautiful words and beautiful actions. Beautiful words and actions. This section presents some of the manners that Allah loves. The hadith here can be thought of as suggested practical steps for change. These steps are gradual, making them the ideal starting point. The Prophet ﷺ said, Indeed, Allah loves one who is lenient when they sell, lenient when they buy, and lenient with repayment of debt. This person is easygoing and forgiving when they sell, buy, repay debt, and recollect debt. Their words are sweet, respectful, and honest, and they are generous and humble in action. Some, on, some, on the other hand, cause harm when they intend to purchase. They haggle and lower the price until the seller loses money. They buy with the intent of returning what they bought after using it or return the merchandise damaged and demand a full refund. Sellers um, err when they raise their prices so it harms consumers. When they monopolize the market to inflate prices and when they sell defective goods, both buyers and sellers stray away from Allah's love when they are rude and disrespectful to each other. The last part of hadith is about debt. If it is due, the debtors should pay it on time if they have the money. If they do not, the creditor should sympathize with their hardship and allow delay in repayment or forgive the debt or some of it if they are rich. The Prophet wasallam said, There is jealousy that Allah loves and jealousy that Allah hates. And there is pride that Allah loves and pride that Allah hates. As for the jealousy that Allah loves, it is jealousy at the presence of something forbidden. Or for the jealousy that Allah hates, it is jealous. As for the jealousy that Allah hates, it is jealousy without cause. And as for the pride that Allah loves, it is a man's pride in battle and his pride when giving charity. And as for the pride that Allah hates, it is pride in aggression and boasting. Allah loves that we be jealous when there are grounds for jealousy, when something wrong is taking place. This jealousy stems the prohibited acts that Allah hates and saves families from breaking up, conflict and much heartache. Jealousy without reason breeds suspicion, hostility and destroys families, something that Allah hates. Pride in battle is for one to display their strength and talent to frighten and discourage the enemy. Pride in charity is to be happy that Allah enabled them to give and to give and to keep giving with enthusiasm and delight. The pride that Allah hates is to is one that leads to injustice and aggression when one feels that they are better than others. Very good. Let, let me explain this hadith because it's really like, wow, what is this? Yeah. Quickly, everyone, listen to me. Sure. Number one, buying and selling. May Allah be pleased with a man who is lenient or a woman who is lenient in buying, lenient in selling, and lenient in returning the debt or asking for his debt. Like... Zakri, he just smiles. Don't smile. Be lenient. Just say, when are you going to pay me? This is very lenient, very nice. Brother, it has been 10 years. When, inshallah, you're going to pay me? You are very nice. Very. Not talking to him at all. That means you are, it's not about nice. It's about ineffective. But talking nicely, sending a WhatsApp or a reminder, 
You are not telling him, pay me now or I kill you. You're just saying, when are you, inshallah, starting to pay me? I really need that money for other things. It's your money. Okay? So sometimes a good man gives like, okay, plan. I work with you. You don't have to return the money one shot, bit by bit. That is lenient. So that is very good ethic. Buying and selling, you are selling. Be easy. You are also buying. Somebody is telling you $10. Don't tell him $2. Bargain, but don't lower it to 2 From 10 to 2 you didn't even say five. You didn't say eight. So be easy. Ah, the other hadith, the jealousy that Allah loves versus the jealousy that Allah has forbidden. Jealousy that Allah loves when there is haram and you get jealous for that. I'll give you an example. There is a wedding. Your wife and daughters are going to this wedding, but they are not really wearing properly. And you say, no, you are not going with this clothes to this wedding. That is a jealousy that Allah loves. I'm not saying they are not wearing at all anything. I'm saying they are not wearing the dress is uh, see-through or uh, very, I don't know what. Even when it's hijab. You got it? Um, you get jealous that someone is trying to talk to your daughter, although she is not yet. Um, and what do you call it? Akad nikah. No, you don't talk to her until there is aqad nikah. Or if you talk by my permission, inside the house, not uh, dating, going out. Aqad nikah, marriage, go out, or in, or even live in a cave. Sharia has to be respected. This jealousy Allah loves. A woman sees her husband flirting with another woman. And she's jealous. This is jealousy that Allah loves. Because he is flirting. He's talking like, uh, hey, what is this? But sister, you're jealous because your husband is talking to his sister, to his own sister. Ah, why is he talking too much to his sister? Why did he go and have lunch with his mom? You forgetting that his mom and his sister are before you? This is a mistake that some ladies do. When they marry, especially young girls, when they marry, they think the husband belongs to them only. Sister, you young, this man you married is son of another woman. He may have a father. He, have may, he may have three, four, five sisters, two brothers. He may have friends. You, you want him just to be under you? You're going to lose everything. If you continue, this bad manner, this is bad manner. Many divorce cases are taking place because of this. These young girls, because they watch so much uh, social media, the husband doesn't belong only to you. He has a family, he has a mother, he needs to go and eat. Sometimes the mother say, come eat. So he passed by. It's not the end of the world. I am sure there is ESP here. Akbir. Allah okay. Allah. Okay. Continue, sister. Um, 
The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Do not belittle any good deed, even if it is emptying from your bucket into the bucket of a seeker of water, and even if it is smiling while talking to your brother." While and talking. While oh yeah, it is smiling while talking to your brother, and avoid making your clothes long, for this is from pride, and Allah, glory be to Him, does not have pride. Does, Does not, not love pride. It's okay. <laughs> and it's, if some... it's glasses, it's glasses. It's old age. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and if someone insults you using what they know about you, do not insult them back using what you know about them. For the reward of that exchange will be yours, and its sin will be on the one who said it. Yes. These are series of seemingly small actions, but by the, the way, by the way, hold on, yes. sister. Uh, about the long cloth is for men, long cloth, long, like like I let my jubba touch the floor. That is bad for Muslim for Muslim men, but for women, no. Okay, just to just for you not to confuse. Yeah. yeah. Okay, these are a series of seemingly small actions, but the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reminded us not to disregard any small act of righteousness. Small acts come together to form something big, and they become a habit that affects our behavior and major decisions. So, whenever there is an opportunity to do something good, seize it and do not think that it is insignificant. The first act mentions in the hadith is that is any little assistance. The first, sorry, the first act mentioned in the hadith is any little assistance you can offer. The second is cheerfulness and when talking to people. The third is specific for men, lifting their garments above their ankles to protect themselves from arrogance. Mm. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "It is such a small deed." But for those who love Allah, it is not small if Allah hates it. The last reminder is not to uh, insult anyone. Uh, no, no, you pass the hadith. Do not ins that one. Yeah, yeah. indeed, Allah. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Indeed, Allah does not love those who wear long garments, i.e., below the ankles." Yes. It is such a small deed. But for those who love Allah. It is not small if Allah hates it. The last reminder is not to insult anyone. A companion once asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for advice. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him, uh, "Do not insult anyone." The man said, "So I did not insult after him, giving me this advice: a free man, a slave, a camel, or a sheep." These are the manners of Islam. Even animals are safe from our harm and from our tongue. And if someone uses what they know about you to put you down, do not do the same to them. If you suppress your anger and frustration and remain calm, Allah will reward you for your lofty manners, and your accuser will carry the sin. Allah. We need a strong motive to embrace better manners. And there is nothing stronger than the promises Allah made us. He will reward us immensely, and will be among the select on the last day. Do I know it is hard to change, but if we really want the hereafter, we will try our best. And if you do, Allah will assist you. Very good. Number one, as small things as not letting your clothes, men, we men. Below our ankle. Hadith is very clear. Inna Allah la yuhibbu al musbilin. Anyone who lowers his garment below his ankle, Allah doesn't like him. But you may say, why? Don't say why. The, the hadith is clear. If I love Allah, my trouser should be above my ankle. My jubba should be above my ankle. But not all the way to the knee, as if I am crossing a river. Small thing, but it means a lot for Allah. Okay, so I do what Allah likes, not what fashion tells me. The fashion of two thousand twenty-four. 
All right. The other thing that you should never use is insulting people. This man came to the Prophet Wasallam, and the Prophet told him, do not insult anyone. When he asked for advice, O Messenger of Allah, please advise me. He said to him, don't insult anyone. Meaning the man, for sure, Jibreel السلام, told the Prophet السلام, this man is, you know, has a problem, has a bad ethic, which is he insults. That companion said, I never insulted anyone after that, after Rasulullah Sassim advised me, not even an animal. And wallahi, I have heard with my own ears people insulting their animals, their donkeys, their horses, their, their, their cows, shepherds angry with, with whatever animals they are looking after. And sometimes they beat the animal so bad, anger. And they insult. This man said, since the Prophet has told me, I did not insult a free man, a slave, a camel, or even a sheep. Sheep doesn't know if you are, they know. A dog, they know. They, ha they, ha they are just, uh, just like you and me. If you insult me, do I know or not? I will know. Animals also have feelings. Allahu Akbar, to this extent. So at the end, the author saying, it's not easy to change, but we need to strive. It's not impossible either. We need to strive. And a lot of people have changed, alhamdulillah, through knowledge, through dua to Allah and through good companionship. Be in a good companionship. May Allah bless you all. Okay. Yes. Can I ask a question but it's nothing to do with our spiritual lessons? No, to... no problem. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, was it the, the Prophet uh, Yusuf or was it Sulaiman who lived 950 years. Uh, Prophet Nuh, more more than 950. Nuh, Nuh alayhi salam. And then he managed to, um, he, he's been doing that war, right? And there were 70 yes. of them who actually accepted Islam. 300 plus, only. 70 or 70? No, 300 plus. 300, okay. And but he not much. It's not much. But he lived 950 years. Yes. At that, length, at that age, meaning yeah. those people at that time they also live as long as he did. Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. Adam and Adam Ali Salam lived more than one thousand years. Those people, early people, used to live for a long, long, long period. Men and women. Yeah. yeah. Adam they, they, lived 1,200 years. They live so long and they still can be very steadfast. And us nowadays, we, our life is not as long as they ask, and yet we are still struggling. Yes. May Allah save us. Actually, it's Rahma, sister. It's Rahma. It's Rahma that we don't live long. You know why? Imagine we live long with the sins. You see, actually Allah is so merciful when he shortened our life between 60 and 70. Because he knows we are so, yeah. From Prophet Muhammad وسلم, until the end of time, the ummah of Muslims will live between average 60 to 70. 60 to 70. More than 63, you are living on a bonus. Mm. Hajja Nazaria. 
Yes, yes. She, I want to ask you back to that hadith um about the garment of the the man that is not like um must be above the ankle. Does that only apply during the prayer time or at all times? All times. Oh, okay. Because I noticed yeah. a lot of men has got trousers which below, I mean, falls below the ankle and even touch the ground. Yes. May Allah forgive us, all men, and forgive our women who don't tailor our clothes. Because fashion, what is fashion? Now the fashion in Italy is above the ankle. Yeah. We don't follow fashion. We follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A Muslim man should have his trouser above his ankle. He shouldn't be dragging on the floor. Shouldn't be working for Bandaraya for free. <laughs> we sweep the floor for free. They don't even pay us. What is this? Especially the ladies. Okay. Uh, when you talk about men, okay, that meaning it has to be above the ankle and not just slightly below the ankle also cannot. Can't do that, right? Um, but what about women? Um, they, they can't use too long garments as well because it attracts as well. Yes. But uh, how about women who wears like, um, like a, how do you say that, a midi skirt with boots or even if they were to use a, a black socks? Meaning it can see the shape of their, their calves, probably. Wrong. Is it enough? To see the shape of that? Uh, let, let's say if they have a skirt uh, below their, their, their knees, okay? And they are wearing boots. Is it allowed? Or oh, boots, no. High boots? But... No, you can wear boots, but on top of the boot, it has to be covered. You cannot see the... The shape of the boots. Shape of the boots or the shapes of the legs. Right. Okay. Cow, cow, cowboy lady, she needs only the gun. Give her a gun. Boots and gun. And the hat. And we call her sister cowgirl. Then I come with a sheriff and shoot her. Takbir. Yeah. No, Islam does not forbid a sister from wearing boots. But sister, why your boots are so, like, obvious? Boots is for your protection of your legs because it's cold, because I don't know what. Boots in Malaysia? Eee, I hope I won't see that. Boots in Malaysia? Inna lillah wa inna ilahi? Raji'un. Boots in a very cold place and covered, meaning the boots are not obvious. Allahu Alam. Okay. May Allah bless you. Shay, I have a question. Can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Go ahead. Uh, this one is uh, uh, regarding um, uh, um, I'm seeking an advice on uh, uh, fatwa actually uh, not not related to our topic today good manners uh, it's about when we are in disaster um, area like we go for a hum human nature uh, in your team right okay let's, let's say we found um uh, mm, like money or gold, jewelry during our cleaning work, what, what should we do with it? Excellent. If you ever go to, uh, if you go anywhere to help and you find gold or money or anything valuable, you have to tell the organizers if you trust them, you give it to them. If you don't trust them, you say it's with me. When the person uh, looks for it, please give him 
or her my email, my phone number. Is this clear? Yes, yeah, sure. Let, let's say I'm from other country and helping another country. Oh, oh, before then, I, die, before I, I leave their country, who, who uh, should I give that? No, it's difficult. Like, Look at me. It's better not to take it with you to another country because that person may not have email or phone to call you. Like Afghanistan, for example. Uh, yes. Like, like uh, Gaza, like, you know what I mean? So yes, yes. give it to the, to the organizers who are trustworthy and not to one. Bring two, three. Give it to them in front of each other. One or two, I don't know. But three, three people at least. Sorry, I found this at this place. So three are now witnesses. Okay, Shay, thank you. The well, more the better, four, even better. Okay. Because four cannot agree on stealing. Yeah. Thank I'm you, sure. Shay. I'm sure this happened to you. That's why you are asking. MashaAllah. Good. Okay. May Allah bless you all. So Allah loves good manners. Remember this. Next week, inshallah, Allah loves the gentle hearts. If you have a gentle heart, congratulations. Allah loves you. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر إخواننا المجاهدين في فلسطين ثبت أقدامهم وانصرهم على اليهود الغاصبين اللهم حرر المسجد الأقصى اللهم حرر المسجد الأقصى اللهم حرر المسجد الأقصى اللهم انصر إخواننا في الضفة الغربية في جنين وفي القدس وفي الخليل وفي سائر بلاد المسلمين اللهم انصر أهل السنة والجماعة على أعدائك أعداء الدين من أحفاد القردة والخنازير والسبائية والقرامطة الملاعين اللهم انصرنا على عدونا وعدوك يا رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام